have to know who we are. Okay? I'm not trying to put fear in you, but you better know who you are. You better stop right now and check your heart and make sure that you know that you're a son of God. Make sure you realize that you're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Because then, Jezebel is under your feet and not in your head, not in your finances, not in your bodies, not in your homes, not in this ministry. Come on, we've got to come up in our thinking. we got to come up in knowing who we are in Christ. We're sons, we're kings and priests, we're joint heirs, we're co-heirs, we're Christ Jesus. Come on. A man... Not at y'all, I'm sorry. I'm mad at the devil. I want to see this thing rebuked. I want to see this thing broken completely. I want to see the destiny of God in this place arise. I want to see those sons that have been yoked by the enemy they ever you be broken. I want to see this place full. I want to see the prophetic words that I've heard declared over this house. Come forth. I want to see this place reach this region like it's supposed to. Come on. Every word that God's spoken shall come to pass. And I know that they've been canceling the ones that was planted that are not of God. Come on. We want to harvest the right crop. We want to harvest what God says is for this place. Come on. So God, we just thank you that we, Father God, are coming to the place in God, even for those that don't know, that are wrestling. God, with the assurance in their depths that they are sons. God, I ask by your spirit that you displace that orphan heart and give them the assurance that they are sons. God, let your heart beat in them like never before. God, let them begin to stand in authority and dominion and not just allow the enemy to plunder their land anymore. Let them stand in the face of adversity and declare, I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. And you will bow. You will bow. I won't bow anymore. I'm not going to run and defeat or retreat anymore. I'm standing my ground. And I'm declaring, even if Jezebel conspires against me, she's going to be the one that's defeated and not I. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every assignment of the enemy we counsel you now in Jesus' name. And God, even those, even those that are stirring up trouble, the troublers in the wrong way, God, I'm not going to pray any witchcraft, but I want you to deal with their hearts. God, minister to their hearts. Let the love of God overtake them. God, even you can cause opposition to get into a new position. God, I thank you, Lord, that this is a day that we're rising up and possessing the land. That even though, God, it's been a hard time, it's been a pressing time, in all things, God, you said you're going to bring a turnaround and make it for the good. So, God, I speak hope and encouragement and life into this ministry and to these people, God. And I declare, God, your will and your way because your kingdom has come. And we declare your will is being done. Not man's, not any of the other demonic force, only the Spirit of God and what the Father God wills will be done in this house. God, I thank you, Lord, that I saw in the Spirit, I saw the influence of this place was being blocked. I saw a wall around this building. And I saw gates of the enemy intermittently around this wall. These are gates of the enemy that you're to possess. And as you possess the walls, you're going to begin to break the reinforcements around this building. And you're going to see the impact go forth. You're going to see the influence of this ministry go farther because there's demonic walls that I saw around this building that's trying to trap that's trying to trap your influence. So it seems like no matter how, because I've been praying over that, because even when I come up here and the praise and worship, like I told you, is anointed, and you can feel the glory of God, but sometimes when you get up here, it feels like you're just, when I'm preaching, I don't know if y'all feel it, but it feels like there's a resistance that you're all your influence and what you're saying and what you're doing is only going so far. Okay? 
okay? And it seems like sometimes you're pounded against a hard brick wall, and you are. Because of that demonic gate and walls that I see around this building. So in the spirit, I think it's strategic that you're doing that intercessory prayer. And I'm going to be agreeing with you that God will show you the gates of the enemy that you're to possess. And if you think about it, if you shoot it to me in email or on Facebook, message me, we'll be praying with you about what the Lord's showing you is what your attack is, what you're going after. Amen? Because we need to see this thing turn around. We need to see these demonic borders broken. Because this is what's limiting your influence and could cause you to get discouraged because you're doing all that you know to do and it seems like it's not doing what you think it should do. Come on. And you're spinning your wheels and spinning your wheels and you're getting burned out because you're not seeing the fruit that you're expecting to see. But God's going to give you revelation to break this thing down. And you're going to see the influence go out beyond these walls like it's supposed to. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise, God, for what you're doing in this place. We give you praise, God, for you, Father God, are given strategy. You, God, are given revelation. You, God, are bringing the turnaround into this house, God. And you, God, are causing their influence to go forth like you determined it to and destined it to, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that this is a preordained house of destiny. And God, I thank you, Lord, that even though the enemy is warred against destiny, it shall come forth. Even though it's tearing, it shall come to pass. In Jesus' name. The, 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 as I was praying, God began to show me there's a difference between being broke and brokenness. Okay? See, a lot of times what happens is, is we're broke. And the enemy is trying to do things to keep you coming from a place of brokenness. There's a difference. To be broke means, or broken, means that what something's out of order. Something's not working right, right? And when you're in that place of things not working right, things seeming out of order, you know, this is a time that the enemy, because there's not order there and it's not functioning properly, the enemy will come in and he will try to seduce you. He will try to discourage you. He will try to get you even hardened against the heart of God because what the warfare has been intense, the things you've been enduring are disillusioning. So when you're broken place, where things are out of order, this is where the warfare comes in. This is where the enemy, like I said, he'll come in and try to disillusion you to keep you from going forward into that place of brokenness. Because brokenness is from where the glory comes out. But when you're broken and the enemy takes advantage of you, what? You can get hardened. Right? You can get hardened. You can even get a hard heart. You can even close off your heart. Because you know what? You've been believing. You've been going this way. You've been thinking this is the day. This is the hour. Oh, I got the revelation now. We're going all the way. And then what? It doesn't work the way you think. It says what? Hope deferred. What makes one sick? It can even cause you to have a hardened heart. Because you're broke. And not the way that God can use you. But in a way that the enemy is trying to abuse you. Okay? So what we have to do is we have to, you know, begin to surrender. We have to begin to humble ourselves in a way that, you know, makes us, you know, a lot of times when we get in these places, we become self-reliant. Oh, come on. We become interdependent. We're trying to figure it out because we're grasping at straws. and We try to do this thing. Okay, we're going to fix this thing. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to, you know, you're trying. These might be good things, but you know what? Because of your self-reliance and your independence now trying to figure it out, you're not doing it the way God wants you to break it through. <clears throat> Come on. It's going to take that level of brokenness. It's going to take it, God, not my will, but your will. It's going to take humbling. It's going to take surrendering. It's going to take, you know, just like Mary at the feet of Jesus. What did she do? She broke open that alabaster box. You are an alabaster box that needs to be broken. 
Because inside of it is God's precious anointing, his perfume, his glory that's within you. And what happened when it broke? It what the perfume filled the room. See, this is where God's gonna fill all things, is when we become broken, and what's in us comes out and fills the atmospheres. Come on. It's good to have the anointing and to trust in the anointing that breaks yokes. But now my heart cry is God. Let me feel atmospheres. Let me release something in the regions and into the communities. Because you know what? That can come, that could, you know, minister to so many more people. Because that can release and touch so many more lives than us personally praying for a person. See, I believe that that's what God is saying for this house. That there's glory that's inside of these walls. Come on. But because of the encampment of the enemy that you've got to break down, it's not allowing it to go into the community like it's supposed to. These things need to be broken. And you know, the thing about Mary when she did that was because, you know, Jesus was the resurrection and the life. And then you had Lazarus sitting there too who had been resurrected. You know, when you're in the midst of resurrection power and resurrection life, what's in a person is going to come out. Come on. In the heart of Mary, it was to serve God in the spirit, to worship him at his feet. In the heart of Martha, was I going to do everything in the natural? Come on. In the heart of Judas was what? Why did she break that? We could have sold that and gotten money. Because the whole time, his hand was in the bag, stealing. See, you got to know that in this hour, as God is releasing his glory and releasing his resurrection power, what's in your heart may come out. And that's because God wants you to deal with these things. If you don't deal with these things, what's going to what's going to happen? You're going to get hard because you're refusing God. When you don't obey God, what happens? Pastor Mike, you get hardened. You lose your sensitivity. Your heart gets hardened because God designs desires obedience so that when he begins to reveal things to us to keep that heart softened and, and, and be in that place of brokenness and not being broke. Come on. We have to be obedient. And this is what God is trying to say. He's given you strategy this hour so that you can get past where you're at and come into that new realm that he's designed for you. Amen. And you know the story, John 12, 1 through 5 is what I was talking about. But the alabaster box represents a container that holds the precious oil, the perfume. Once broken, it affects the atmosphere. The room was filled. That's the difference in between in being broken and brokenness. From a place of brokenness, the glory within us can be um, released to fill the room, to fill the atmosphere, to shift a city or region. The glory in us is for the atmospheres. Amen. Come on. This is what he wants in this house. This is why you've had the struggle. It's not about just knowing that you have an anointing to break a yoke, which is fine. But you're coming into a place of understanding that you're a son. It's not just about in the church. You're kings and priests. Come on. You are the ones that represent the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, when you rise up into that place, you have to begin to release things that affects atmospheres, cities, regions, and nations. Come on. He's causing you to see that you are seated in heaven places with Christ Jesus. He's shifting mindsets even now. He's shifting mindsets because you got to have higher thoughts. He said, my ways what are higher than yours. Come on. His thoughts are higher than ours. We've got to have his thoughts in order to know his ways. Come on. Come on. And this is where he's working. He's been pulling down the mindsets because a lot of times we think lower of ourselves not to get prideful, but you know what? There's a difference because you've been broken. You understand the brokenness. You understand that you are because of Christ. You are a son of God. You do have power and authority and dominion. Come on. It's not in your ability because that self-reliance and the independent spirit has been broken and now you're in a place of brokenness and it's not him. I mean, it's not you that moves and liveth and have his being but it's him. Come on. It's time for him to stand up on the inside of us. It's time to him to take dominion and authority. It's time that we release him. And this has been the struggle. Everywhere I go, it's the same. Because why? Because we all have been in that season of saying goodbye to us. Hello to Jesus. Come on. Come on. Us decrease, him increase. That's the only way we're going to release the glory. Come on. Broken means what? Perish, destroy, to crack into pieces. How many have felt like they were cracked into pieces in this last season? Fragmented, come on. To crush, to conquer, to strike, 
being bruised, broke down, afflicted, smitten, violated, frustrated. Come on. That's broken. We have felt frustrated. Haven't you felt frustrated in the past season? It's the process we've been in. Broken by definition means subdued, totally humbled. Come on, not functioning, out of order, weakened, crushed by grief, intermittently stopping and starting. Come on, that's how we know when we're broken. How many starts and stops have we had? Okay, this is it now. We're going with anointing, God. We're getting a momentum now. Yeah, we're running that race. Yeah, all of a sudden, breaks. Come on, we're broken. Come on, God's got to fix us and get us in alignment. And the other side of broken, there's better meanings in Hebrew and Greek. It means to ascend. Oh, yeah. yeah. To be high. To mount. To be or maybe made powerful. To demolish. To break forth. To bloom. See, there's two phases of broken. Come on. There's the negative that we see as negative because it's humbling us. But then after we get on the other side of that, when Jesus is the one that's emerging, what is it going to happen? We're going to ascend. Come on. We're going to mount up. Come on. We're going to bloom. We're going to blossom. Just as he was talking about in God's time, he makes things all, all things beautiful. See, at first it doesn't look like anything. Come on. Because the seed has to go on the ground and it dies before anything blooms and blossoms in that season of, come on. Come on. It may look like death, but you don't know what's growing under the ground. Brokenness is God's purpose of the priceless perfume falls to the floor. Scattered in brokenness and disbelief, we face two choices. We're going to call it wasted or we're going to call it restored. Come on. When facing personal brokenness, sometimes hope of restoration or moving to a new season eludes us. If we get caught in seeing the negatives of where we're at. See, I don't want you to get caught in seeing not a lot of people here or seeing or you know, hearing the things that, you know, are in the negative. I want you to grab a hold of hope. I want to get a fight stirred up back in you. I want you to stand your ground. I want you to know greater is he that's in you than anybody or anything that's in this earth or world. Come on. And he has greatness for you. There's greatness stored up inside of you. That's why he, you've been going through this broke season because he's trying to get the greatness of God that's going to make an impact in change this world. Come on. He's trying to get that out of you. But we've had to be broken, 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 broken because there's so much of us in the way. There's the wrong mindsets. There's the flesh. Come on. There's those opinions. There's those judgments. There's those things that we just had a hard time letting it bow. Come on. But we've been broke to be broken. Come on. Because out of that brokenness, the glory of God is going to emerge. Yeah. It's going to fill the room. It's going to go forth out of this place into the region. Come on. Those sons that are out there that you cannot reach, that you cannot put your hand on to release the anointing that destroys yokes, the glory released will go right to where they're sitting, right into their living room. Right into where they're sitting in front of that computer, doing things they shouldn't be doing, watching things they shouldn't watch. And that glory that's released will apprehend them and arrest them. And before you know it, they'll be coming to the house of God and won't even know why they're here because they really don't want to come. But they're under arrest by the Holy Ghost because of that glory, because you paid the price, because you were broken, but now you're broken and you're releasing him into the atmosphere of this region. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. There's some sons that need to be apprehended by the glory. There's some sons that need to be apprehended by the glory. There's some sons out there that have been yoked to the things of the world, that have been yoked to religion. Even they've seen things in the church that have turned their hearts and they say, if that's God, I don't want it. Because the church has magnified and manifested the wrong Jesus to them. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. The church has been full of self. It's been full of religion. It's been full of pride. It's been full of doctrines of men. And we have we have, have falsely represented Jesus Christ to the younger generations. And so now they're out there in the world getting caught up in witchcraft and pornography and drugs and alcohol. Trying to get a fix that they should have been getting in the four walls if we had our stuff right. But the sons of God are arising. And we will reflect the proper image of God. We will reflect the image of God. And we will release the glory of God. And these sons will come back. The prodigals will come back. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Glory, 
man of God. Right. Psalms 34, 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Amen. Amen. Psalms 51, 17, the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. Matthew 5, 2 through 12. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is a kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Amen? Amen. Galatians 2, 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. See, this is the other thing. When we're in that place of being broken, the enemy tries to steal your faith, Pastor Mike. Because he wants you to have more faith in your circumstances staying the way they are than having faith in the Son of God who can change that circumstance. We become disillusioned. And you know, it's just, it's just that. It's an illusion to bring disillusion. And a lot of times it comes with confusion. That's what the Holy Spirit told me one day because I was looking at things that looked so negative. I was like, God, we've been in this thing for a long time and we're not seeing what we, you, you understand? We're not seeing the fruit. We're not seeing the breakthrough. We're not seeing what we've been laboring for. Come on, you can get in that place if you allow the enemy to talk to your mind and because it a lot of times will line up with what you're seeing in the natural. And the Spirit told me, he said, you know, it's confusion. It's just an intrusion. It's an illusion to bring disillusion. Come on. He paints that picture in the natural of how it, he wants us to believe it is. But if we believe beyond what we see and look in the spirit, I would say that this is a place that's destined for breakthrough. Come on. Because how it looks in the natural, Jesus is going to do something. Because you know what? He's not a liar. Come on. He's not a liar. And what he said, he's going to do. Come on. You need to cause those words and the, those prophetic utterances and those things that you know and those visions that you know. Come on. You need to allow them to begin to surface. Because I believe God's going to release a resurrection over those seeds. Amen. God calls us each according to his purpose, assuring us that in all things his goodness endures, even in the midst of being broken. See, in the midst of being broken, what we're freed from shame. Leviticus 26, 13, I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high. As we walk closely with God, our burden, our guilt is broken. Amen? Amen. In the midst of being broken, we're delivered from schemes. We escape like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Psalms 124.7. Praise God for the countless times he has delivered us from our enemies. Amen. In the midst of being broken, we're rescued in humility. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are crushed in spirit. Psalms 34.18. By surrendering our stubbornness, he accepts our brokenness and hears the prayers of the righteous. In the midst of brokenness, we are healed from within. But he was wounded and crushed for our sins, and we are healed, as Isaiah 53, 5. Those who trust in the Lord receive inner peace, as our brokenness is what God requires. In our brokenness, we are restored eternally. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Come on, Luke 4, 18. The Father uses adversity to break our self-will. And transforms us into useful vessels for his kingdom. Brokenness is the Lord's method of dealing with our self-reliance. And that desire within us to act independently from him. And wants us to bring every area of our lives into submission to his will. He will use even trials of faith to get us to a point of surrender. Why? Because he knows what he has in store. And if these things are an idol and an obstacle. He is going to allow us to go through a trial. So that we will see our need to let go of these things. Come on. And it's not for our bad. It's for our good. It's because of deliverance that's needed in our lives. Because as long as we hold on to something that's an idol, it's something that stands in between us and God. Now, if it's something that God is telling you you need to let go of and you're being stubborn about it, you're in idolatry. Come on. Oh, come on. 
If I told you give up some of that TV so that you can read and pray and get studying closer, getting closer to me, come on, and you don't, well, your TV is your idol. Come on. If he, queen of Facebook, if he tells me stay off that Facebook and get more in the Word, and I don't, then Facebook's my idol. Come on. If he tells you quit running around with them people and you don't, then those people become your idol. If he tells you to quit taking certain drugs or drinking and you don't, those drugs and drinking is your idol. And then you wonder why you get into a place of hardship. It's because you're broke. You're out of order. Come on, come on. And it's going to take you letting go of those idols and come into that place of brokenness and humbleness so that your God is not standing behind an idol and you're sitting there wondering why your God ain't delivered you and got you out of something. But your God is sitting there waiting on you to humble yourself and choose to get out of agreement with that thing so that his deliverance can reach you. Come on. One thing he doesn't go against, what is your soul, your will? Come on. If you're saying out of your mouth, God deliver me, but inwardly you're not confronting that thing yourself, well, that's why you're still in bondage. Come on. He knows your heart. It doesn't matter what you're saying out your mouth. If you're saying, oh, God, deliver me, heal me, but in your heart you're saying, but I don't want to let go because I'm enjoying that thing or it's going to be too hard to walk that out, God. Oh, God, I don't know if I can do that. If you are got that going under that warfare in your heart and you don't mean it, don't even pray it because it's not going to happen. Come on. You've got to be in unity with God from within your depths. You've got to mean business with God. God, shift my mind because you know what? My mind's out of order. It doesn't want to uh, believe you the way there's too much warfare in my mind, God. That there's, there's outside forces that are bringing confusion and disillusion in my mind that's keeping me from believing you and seeing your word and seeing you the way I should. God, shift my mind. That should be your first prayer if you're in a battle. Because as soon as your mind gets in order, then what? You're going to start believing right and thinking right. Come on. And then it's going to make the deliverance and healing easier to apprehend because you're not, you're, you're not in a place of division in your depths with God. Amen. You've got to be in unity with God. That's what's going to make, I don't even know why I'm here, but you know what? We've got to be in unity with God in our depths, especially if we're going into warfare. A house divided cannot stand. That's just not these four walls. That's us. We're the first house. Come on. If we are divided in our depths, part of us wanting Jesus and part of us wanting the world, part of us wanting our deliverance and part of us lacking what we're doing, we're not going to stand in a place of deliverance. Amen. We're double-minded, unstable, wavering. What, and what does it even say about that? It says, such a man should not even expect to receive from me. There you go. You're not going to receive what you're standing from if you don't oppose what you're asking God in your own depths. Come on. That's why we've been going through a brokenness. Amen. Because God's trying to get those things out of us. Those things that oppose his will and his way in our life. Because why? He wants to release glory right through you. Amen. And that's been the problem that in the past we've not allowed that working of brokenness in our depths. So what we've been releasing, like I said earlier, has not always been the spirit of God. Oh, come on. A lot of ministers especially, you have to really be in that place of allowing God to search you. Because if not, you're not going to release God. You're going to release something in your soul. Come on. I think we've all heard messages that you felt like were the opinion of man and not the opinion of God. Come on. I think you've all been in places where you've heard the music and you thought there's no anointing. They're doing that in their own gifting. Come on. It's important. That we allow that surrender on our lives. Amen. Brokenness is about the future. The Father deals with our attitude for that purpose. Of conforming us to his will. And making us effective ministers. Because of others. Yeah. God wants to see us set free. He wants to see us delivered. He wants to see us healed. But more importantly than that. It's not just about us. If we're refusing God to do that in us, how many lives are we not impacting because of that? 
Come on. He anoints you. He appoints you. He gives you a gifting. Come on. He gives you an anointing. Why? Because he wants you to impact other lives. So if you're not getting in that place with God of allowing that brokenness to work in you so that he can get that glory out of you to impact others, then you're causing others to be held up as well. Amen. Oh, come on. It's not just about us. Amen. Come on. Examples of brokenness. Moses was broken in the desert. He spent 40 years learning to obey the Lord before God used him to free Israel from Egyptian bondage. Oh, come on. We've all felt like we've been there. Right? We all felt like we've been in Egypt. But God was what? Doing that work in us so that we could set a people free. Come on. The Apostle Paul, Paul's thorn in the flesh kept him from um, exalting himself despite all the wondrous things he did. Come on. Because God knew he needed that thorn. What? Because he did glorious things for the kingdom of God. And he didn't. He wanted to constantly remind him of his reliance on God. Amen. Come on. Jesus corrected Peter's pride many times. One instance was Peter was speaking to Jesus when Jesus spoke of what was to come. Matthew 16, 23 through 23. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. And this is concerning when Jesus spoke of what was to come. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Come on. Sometimes people can be a stumbling block when they go by what they think and not by what God thinks. Come on. We have to get with God and address these things in the spirit because even though, you know, I've been walking with Tracy and Dana for a while. And there's been times, you know, that I think I have something figured out. But then when I get to God, and God shows me something different. But if I had tried to enforce what I thought on them, you see, I could have been their stumbling block. Okay? But because I allowed God to deal with me and change my mind, prayerfully in Jesus' name, I'm not their stumbling block. Amen? So even people that walk closely, look at Peter was one of his disciples. And he still was not seeing what Jesus was saying to him. And he was trying to represent an obstacle to what Jesus needed to do. Come on. So Pastor Mike and Pastor Debbie, they're getting with God. They're receiving from God. And just because y'all, they see things differently and try to voice your opinion to them about how you think it should go, you need to make sure that's what God's telling you. Amen? Because you have to be in unity. You have to be in unity. We have to be in unity with one another. So we have to make sure that we're not one another's stumbling block by trying to force our opinions. We need to make sure it's something that God wants us to relate. Amen? Did I say that right? Um, Psalm 147, 3. He healed the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. See, this is the good part. This is what I was seeing. I was seeing that even though things seem one way, you know, even remember about Lazarus. He was in the tomb four days before Jesus showed up. And Mary and Martha were like, when he said, remove the, the stone, Mary and Martha were like, but he's been dead for four days. He stinketh. They were thinking it's over. It's done. It's too late. But as soon as God, Jesus caught Lazarus out of the grave, and, and he did it, what? So that the crowd would see and know the power of God. That's why he spoke it out loud. It wasn't because he had to speak it out loud. It was for the community. It was for those people standing around. They needed to see the power of God working and know that it was the power of God. And when he come forth, when he called Lazarus forward out of that grave, it didn't matter about the natural circumstances. Come on. Yeah, he was dead. Yeah, that's a natural thing. Yeah, he was bound in grave clothes. That's a natural thing. Yeah, he was in a tomb with a stone over it. Yeah, in the natural it seemed impossible. But what seems impossible is where God gets glory. Come on. We need to start looking at what seems impossible as a thing that God can get glory out of. 
Because I'm telling you, he's getting ready to release resurrection power. And there's nothing impossible in that atmosphere. Resurrection power brings to life what is dead and causes a multiplication. Amen. We need to go from anointing that destroys yokes on individual lives to the glory that impacts regions. Shifting atmospheres, releasing the glory. Second Chronicles 5, 13 through 14. It came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Come on. Long for the days. I long for the days where we can't even preach, Pastor Mike. Because the glory of God is so strong we can't even stand. That there's an awesome presence and a reverence. The fear of the Lord is restored back to the house. And all we can do is bow in His presence and know that He is God. Come on. In that kind of atmosphere and presence, we ain't got to worry about the anointing that destroys yokes. Because he will be in that atmosphere. And when you breathe, his glory is going to deliver you and set you free. Come on. We're going to be prostrate before him in humility and brokenness. And we're going to see God do things that only God can. Come on. That day is coming. I feel it. I feel it. It's coming. Where the glory of God is so strong that no man can speak. It's coming. Jesus was the resurrection and the life. And wherever he went, not just lives were changed, but regions as well. John 8, 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He wants us to release that light. Amen. Where Jesus fed the 5,000. That was a community he reached. Come on, wherever he went and healed the sick, there was always crowds that formed. You get some true miracles that get sounding in this region, and people know that God is resurrecting things in this place, they're going to come. Amen. Especially when you get those borders around this place broken that's affecting your influence. Come on, it's going to come forth, it's going to go forth. Ephesians 1, 22 through 23, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Come on. All these things have been given to us too because we're joint heirs. We're co-heirs with Christ. we got to get this mindset. Whatever Jesus said, he did what? He said we should do because he went to the Father and even greater. Come on. Where's that mentality at? Come on, where's your mentality at? Come on, not to get private like I said, but we got to understand our rights and privileges as sons. He said, why? Because he went to the Father. Even these things we shall do and even greater. Come on, that should get you excited. I'm ready for the greater works. I'm ready to, to you know, we, we shared in the sufferings. Come on, we shared in the sufferings of Jesus, but now it's time to share in the glory. Come on, to be partakers of it, to release it, to see it manifested. Come on, even greater things. Come on. Hallelujah. Where's your expectancy? I'm expecting greater things. I'm expecting greater things. I'm expecting to see Jesus operate through me in my life. Amen. Come on. Greater things. We got to expect greater things. This house has to expect greater things. You have to expect greater things. Pastor Mike, greater things. Greater things. This is a year of greater things shall you do. Come on. Come on. We descend when we're broke. But it's because we are getting ready to ascend and release him from our depths so that he can fill all things. Ephesians 1 23. Like I said, we are his body. And the fullness of him, Christ, who fills all in all. Paul's talking about the way Christ rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. And in doing so, he broke the bonds of death and captured for himself a host of captives and led them free from sin and death and fear. Then Paul says, Jesus did this that he might fill all things. Filling all things is something Jesus does with the authority he has as he's risen ruler over all things. Come on. We are joint heirs. We are co-heirs with Christ. Come on, we are partakers of this. 
We need to meditate on this scripture and understand the fullness of what God's saying. We need to let this shift our mindsets so that we no longer accept anything but greater things. Come on. We just get so tolerant of the things that are below what God has for us. We need to break that tolerance and say, I'm not going to settle for that. I'm not going to accept that anymore. I'm not having crumbs anymore, Pastor Mike. I want the greater things. He said, because I go to the Father, these things you should do and even greater. Come on. It's not about us. It's about him. You need to get excited about him. You need to get excited about his greater works and his greater things that he has in store for you. Amen. Come on. It's about him and the greater, the greatness that's within you. Yeah, if it's about you, yeah, just sit there. But it's not about you. Come on. If it's about you, yeah, stay in your seat. But it's not about you. It's about him. Amen. It's about him. Amen. It's about displaying him. It's about his greater works, his greater things. Come on, stand up to your feet. I want you to, I want you to say this. Greater things shall I do. Because Jesus went to the Father. I expect greater things. I will walk in greater glory. I will release the greatness of Christ from my depths. I will see Christ Jesus fill all things. I will operate in signs, wonders, and miracles. I will lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I will see strongholds pulled down because of Christ Jesus in me. I will see this territory and region changed because of the atmosphere released through me. God, shift my mind to no longer settle, but to expect the greater that you promised. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just pray in the spirit a minute. Come on, let's pray in the spirit a minute. Thank you. God, I just agree with them that you begin to release greater things. God, you begin to release greater works. God, greater manifestations. God, you said because he went to the Father, we shall walk in these things. We shall see these things because of Christ Jesus that's in us. And we are co-heirs. We are joint heirs with Christ. And our expectancy should be and will be and is in your greater things and your greater works and your greater glory, God. In your greater manifestation. Greater, 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 God. You do what only you can do. Because if we can do it on our own, God, it's not greater. But if you do it, it's greater, God. It's greater, God, when you do it. It's greatness when you do it, God. It's greatness when you do it, God. Through brokenness, he's going to bring order. Through brokenness, he's going to bring order. Through brokenness, he's going to bring order. If you want to get back in order, through brokenness, come up front. Come on. Come on. If you're tired of being broken out of order, come on. He's going to bring order through brokenness. And that means you're breaking self-reliance. Your dependency is on Christ. Come on. And you're going to agree to begin to release that glory from within you. That when you come into this house, you're not going to just sit there and wait for somebody to move you. But you're going to move. Come on. Come on. Move. Move. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. God, through brokenness, through brokenness, God, bring your order. Through brokenness, God, bring your order. We call this house in order in Jesus' name. That it's no longer broken in the sense of being out of order. God, you're bringing alignment to this house in Jesus' name. That it will begin to flow and it will begin to function according to your plans and your purposes, God, in Jesus' name. Now, God, we speak to every stubborn spirit. We speak to every spirit of rebellion. We speak to every spirit of confusion. We speak to every spirit of control. 
receive every spirit of manipulation and witchcraft in the name of Jesus. And we command you to depart from this house now in Jesus' name. We take authority over the atmosphere in Jesus' name. We pull out every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. We declare the mind of Christ to operate in this house and these people like never before in Jesus' name. Begin to focus on him. Begin to focus on him. We just declare that there is an anointing, Father God, being released right now to soften hard hearts. God, there's an anointing right now to heal the brokenhearted. There's an anointing right now as they tap into you, God, to come to that place of brokenness to where, Father God, you can be released from their depths. In Jesus' name, that you will come forth in their lives like never before. That they will impact regions. That will impact their families. That will impact their workplaces, God. That they're no longer broken out of order, but in brokenness, they are back in order. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, for humility. I thank you, Lord God, for sensitivity to the spirit realm to emerge. God, begin to burn within them. Burn the chaff, God. Burn the chaff, God. Let unity be in this house, not a house divided. God, within their being, let them be in unity. Unity with you, God, mind, body, soul, and spirit, and as a body, God. Because that's where the commanded blessing flows. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just begin to worship Him. Put your focus on Him. Begin to call out to Him. Declare that you're as Mary at His feet. Willing to break your alabaster box. Break your alabaster box. Come on, get personal with Him. Bow at his feet and break your alabaster box. Come on. Break your alabaster box today. Allow what's within you to come forth. Trust him. Some of you have been hurt in relationships and it's hard to trust God like that. Trust is an important thing. Trust is an important thing. Ugh. Oh. Some people is holding on to some trust issues. Trust issues. You've been hurt in relationships. Trust issues. Yeah, thank you. Trust issues. I speak healing. I speak healing to whoever you are with trust issues. You find it hard to even trust the Father God. Trust issues. I speak to those that are wavering in their hearts. That they still feel forsaken. They're saved, but they're still feeling like they're on the outside looking in. Come on. There's somebody here that's wavering in this. Double-mindedness. I speak to double-mindedness. Jesus name because single mindedness worship him worship him worship him
releasing more than we've been waiting on. Because as the seasons now to birth, the seasons now to birth, I'm ready for things, I'm ready for things, I'm preparing their hearts, even though you don't know, even though you can't see it. I'm ready for things, I'm ready for things. This is a season of birth. So you see some of those things manifest. Yes. Lord God, and believe in your word. You're, you're true. The whole cloud, he was right. Father, he was in this Yeah, 